Correlated subqueries run a little slower, actually, in some cases, a lot slower than normal subqueries. And that's because the correlated subquery has to run for each row of the outer query. Now, ideally, and I suspect this is true, that that um, SQL database vendors would optimize this to remember certain result sets after it has evaluated it once. But but just let's just pretend that doesn't exist and, and talk a little bit about what has to go on here with this correlated subquery when we when we run it. So again, this is from the last video. I'm pulling the orders along with their latest order, or not the orders, the customers, with their latest order date here on the right. So if I go back here and I, let's just do this first part of this query. I'm going to, I'm going to do the join with orders and get, get our, in fact, let me put splat, let me put splat up here just, just to make it so we can see everything. Okay. So now I have this big fat join table from the outer query. Okay, and then, then for in, in order to evaluate this condition here, this where order date equals the max of yada yada yada, we have to find the max order date for this customer. So before with normal subqueries, you run the subquery once and that's it. But in the case of a correlated subqueries, we have to run the subquery for every unique, at least every unique customer ID. Okay, so we have alpha K I and N and Anton and so on and so forth and the reason why we have to run the subquery for each for each row of this outer query is because the results of this subquery depend on what C dot customer ID is this value here is our variable and this variable changes its value depending on what row we are on from this outer query so for example remember that a, a select here select from where Basically, we do the join, and then this where has to go through one by one. The where goes pop, 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 and eliminates rows that don't satisfy the, the uh, where condition. So in order to, to even test this where condition, let's try the first row. Alf KI, Alfred's, Marie Anders, all that kind of stuff. Okay, we need the max order date. Okay, so for this outer query, we're going to evaluate this row. We need the max order date for this customer ID. Well, the customer ID is Maria Anders. So, again, if we go over to the order date, find the max order date. It's this April 9th, 1998. And we find that 1997, 825 is not equal to April 9th. So then this row, this this first row in our big join table is eliminated. And then the outer query just moves on to the next row. Oh, okay, well, it's Alf KI, Maria Anders. So we need the max order date for, for Maria Anders. Well, th and this is what I was talking about, the optimization. Hopefully, I and I would assume that SQL Server would would uh, cache the response, the result we got from our last query. You know, but either way, all right. Here we are on ro on row two. We need to find the max order date for this this customer ID. So then we go over again, and um, the max order date is April 9th, and so on and so forth. And it has to theoretically, it has to run that once for every single row. Now, if it caches it, it only has to run it once per unique customer ID. But now, notice the customer ID changes here. All right, we have to select the max order date again because this value, the c.customer ID, changed from Alf Ki to Anatur. And so, what is the uh, what is the max order date for Anatur? It looks like Anatur, uh, 96, 97, November 28th. Oh, we got 98 here, March 4th. See, but did you see how I have to physically look at this and say, oh, well, March 4th, 1998, that's the latest one. And so that's going to be the max order date. And so only on the row where where the order date matches the max order date do we keep that one. But now when I go down to Anton, at least, well, C.customer changed again. Customer ID changed again. So then it has to reevaluate and so on and so forth. So that's why correlated subqueries run a little slower than the normal subqueries. Because with the normal subquery, you just run it once. I think you can use that result set for the for the outer query. Whereas here, now that we're doing some correlating, depend as the value here changes depending on what row we are on in the outer query, we have to rerun this nested query.